Hey, good morning, SNC family and friends. Hope you're having a great morning. If you're not, I would just stop and, and ask the Father just to give you his peace uh, and just speak and ask the Holy Spirit to just come upon you and just give you encouragement and give you a sense of, of his presence in your environment, wherever that setting is right now as you're listening to this podcast. So today we're, we are continuing our series of uh, spinning off of the message from Sunday, the prodigal son. And uh, my thought today is prodigals come from all walks of life. And uh, remember, remember yesterday's um, message about prodigal really means to waste. And so there are many people, matter of fact, there's like 8 billion people in, our people in our world right now. And they come from all walks of life and many, many different experiences, uh, both in the past and in the present tense that people are dealing with right now. So, so I got to thinking about the prodigal son and, and again, don't, don't think that for any, any minute that I'm trying to add to the scripture. I'm not trying to add to the scripture. But, but I thought it would be neat to give the prodigal son a name and an age. Just because um, um, we don't know his name and we don't know his age. And maybe it would put things in more of a perspective if we kind of thought about him with a name and, and an age. And so, so I, I've, I've named him Aaron. And then I'm, I've, I've decided that I'm going to make him about 21 years of age. Now, again, this is not scriptural, okay? This is just me having a little bit of fun with, with uh, m the mystery of who this young man is. So his name is Aaron. He's 21 years of age. He's been brought up in a tremendous home. The scripture doesn't mention his mother's name. So, so the absence of his mother is probably because she is, she is gone. She is not there. And so he's a, he's a young son being raised with his brother. And he, uh, he's the youngest. And uh, he's going to get one third of his father's inheritance because uh, by, by, by uh, um, historically we know that the eldest would get two thirds of the property or the assets that would fall upon the children. And so he's got a third of his father's wealth. I don't know what that is, no more than you would know. Uh, the location of this young man, we just know he was there in that surrounding area possibly. And it might be even where you are right now. Maybe you are not 21 years of age and maybe your name is not Aaron, but maybe you can put your place, your, yourself in, in this particular young man's place. Again, we don't know his name. Again, we don't know his age. I'm just having a little fun here, okay? Um, we, there's some things that I want to walk through to, to, um, to, to tie into today's devotion. Prodigals come from all walks of life. Number one, they need someone to care about them. There's a prodigal probably across the street from you in your neighborhood or across from where you work or in the very same environment you work in who needs someone to care for them. The second thing is they need someone to pray for them. Did you know that our prayer of intercessory, our a prayer of intercessor, uh, accessory where we are praying or we are interceding on the behalf of others truly does make a difference in the life of that one who has slipped away. Number three, they need someone to believe in them. They probably have a feeling that they have wasted their life, they have ruined everything, and no one has any confidence, no one has any faith in them, and no one really wants to give me a second chance because I've just ruined everything. Well, I think that we should help believe with them. We should, we should come alongside them and say, hey, I believe you can do this. I believe you are more than what you are right now. I believe you can be more than what you are right now. Number four, they need someone who will journey with them. It's not just about making a one phone call or having one time of prayer. It's about willing, being willing to come alongside someone and spend some time with them and share with them and walk them back through the whole process of, of returning back to the Father's kingdom and getting in step with the word and prayer and worship and serving God. And the last one, number five, they need someone who will help them find home. They need someone who will take them by the hand and help them find home. Remember, the prodigal of our story was in a far country. He was a long way from home. He had entered into spiritual darkness. His, his, his spiritual life would have been very foggy very dismal, very discouraging. And even though that story doesn't tell anything about someone leading him home, 
We know the Holy Spirit led him home. Some people just need us to journey with them enough that we bring them home. Where we can plug them into a local church. Where we can plug them into a small group. Where we can plug them into an environment that's positive and full of light and truth. Versus the environment they came out of that's dark and negative and full of death and cursings. And so just five points to be thinking about. Uh, again, someone to care, someone to pray, someone to believe, someone to journey, and someone to help them find their way home. Trust you'll have a great day and, and just press in and keep on serving the Lord and we'll see you soon and I'll talk to you later.